G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Continuing our little series we got going on of ranking the uh, various drafts that have occurred over the last 15 years. In today's video, I'm going all the way back to 2008. This is actually one of my favorite drafts. And at the time, I thought it was probably the strongest draft since 2001. And I think that's proven to be true with a lot of big names coming, particularly in the top 20 of this year's draft. I have fond memories of this particular draft. It was the first draft that I ever took interest in. And it was because the Eagles had just finished second last and we had three picks in the top 20. And I think uh, both WA teams did relatively well out of this year. It was also the famous draft where Jack Watts was taken pick one. This was really the start of Melbourne descending into what they would eventually become uh, before coming good again in the late 20 teens. But yes, Melbourne had a shocker here, even though they had picks 1, 17 and 19. So that's fun to look back on. Before I crack into ranking these players into categories on Tier Maker, like I've been doing in all the other videos, I should let you know that through True Footy, you get 20% off and free shipping at the website manscaped.com. Manscaped has all your needs for rounding out your male grooming routine, or in fact, for a lot of you, upgrading it. They get a variety of different products from the actual body hair trimmers. They've got a nose and ear hair trimmer. I've always been a manscaper, to be honest. I don't know why, but for like 10 years, I've just always preferred the way my chest looks when I shave it. The great thing about the Lawnmower 4.0 is that sometimes, obviously, you get a little bit busy and you let it grow out. And sometimes I've had a pretty hairy chest. But it doesn't matter how long you leave it because the Lawnmower 4.0 genuinely will get the job done very, very quickly. Previously to using a body hair trimmer, I would just use the old school razors and it is an absolute nightmare of a job. But the Lawnmower 4.0, you can use it in the shower, which is probably the biggest positive for me. It's ceramic bladed to reduce uh, grooming accidents, as they call them. And it's just a super good blade. It literally just get rid of everything very, very quickly. So like I said, 20% off and free shipping by watching True Footy. Use that code at checkout and you will enjoy a great benefit. All right, so we're back on Tier Maker and we are gonna be ranking various players. Uh, now, like it's the previous videos I've done, uh, I've got the top 20. By default, the top 20 of this draft have made it into the Tier Maker and then I've gone and handpicked some good players later on in the draft. There's too many players to include like 60 players on this. And to be honest, you know, who really wants to see me go at length to rank a player that played two games for their club when they were drafted in the fourth round. So we've got about 30 players here. I think it's exactly 30 and we're going to rank them from top liner, genuine gun, good player, decent player, and then average the bottom tier. So as I typically do in these videos, I like to have one player in each category to set the parameters of these rankings and then we'll go from there. So uh, let's have a look at who is a top liner. Who's the best player from this draft? Whether he's the best player or not, I'm not sure, but I've just spotted Dane Beams here. He is a top liner, obviously had a great career at Collingwood, winning a premiership in 2010, went back to Brisbane, had a really good run of form there in a side that was really struggling. Then went back to Collingwood uh, and that last little leg didn't work out quite as he'd hoped, oh, but still retires a pretty much a champion of the game. For me, he's a top liner and a nice player to start with. Uh, let's see who is a average player. Okay, so this is Lewis Johnston, who was pick like 11, I think, for the Adelaide Crows and uh, didn't really play too much football. And it's no real comment on his ability, to be honest. I don't even remember him, but by default, he was delisted after not too much footy. Uh, and the fact that I barely remember him kind of indicates that he didn't really make his mark at AFL level. A genuine gun is probably Phil Davis, I would say, uh, at the height of his powers at GWS, uh, which is not his original club. Of course, he was drafted to Adelaide and then he was one of the inaugural giants uh, as being one of those free agent picks. But yeah, never been the absolute best in his position, but a fantastic captain for GWS while they were going well and uh, just a genuinely good consistent player. I'd say he's better than good player. I'd say he's a genuine gun. Indecent. Uh, I'm going to put Tyron Vickery because, you know, like he was a much maligned player, but he did actually fork out a half decent career firstly at Richmond and then um, lasted all the way to Hawthorne. So he's actually forked out a, a fairly decent AFL career there, but I wouldn't say he was a good player, would you? In terms of good player, I don't know. Hamish Hartlett, is that too harsh? I am going to potentially move these around. Sometimes it is a little bit hard off the top of your head to, to grade everyone correctly. So what I might do is do a review at the end of the video and see if I can split some of these players up. But Hamish Hartlett has been a good, consistent player for Port Adelaide. Has he been genuine gun? We'll see how he compares to the others, but I don't think of him as a genuine gun. I think of him as a good player. Top liner again, I've just spotted Rory Sloan here, um, you know, particularly at the height of his powers. He was sort of in the mix for a brown low medal. Always been a great midfielder and an even better leader. Um, at least that's the impression I got from the 
Making Mark documentary a few years ago. He seems like a really good captain, really genuine guy, but at, at the very base of it all, a top-line AFL player, I would say. Tom Lynch, I've just spotted here from the Adelaide Crows, did start his career at St Kilda, which many people won't remember. Um, did he end up ending his career at North? I remember it being talked about, but I do not remember seeing him play for North Melbourne. It doesn't matter. He forked out most of his career as a sort of third tall forward running wingman, um, which has sort of become a more and more common role. And he was one of the first players I remember really being played uh, in that way as a tall forward. Good player for them, um, particularly during that era where they were competing for premierships. So I think good is about right. Then there's a couple of Melbourne uh, delistees here that I'll jump straight to. Um, and I forget which one is which. I think this one is James Strauss. And he was pick 17, I think, um, which would have been not their priority pick. It doesn't really matter. And the other one was Sam Blees. And forgive me if I've got them mixed up, but neither of them really had too much of an impact at AFL level. And I remember Melbourne fans back in the day, uh, this was for like when I first started on Big Footy, was 2009. They were really bragging about how these guys were going to make it. And I think at least one, if not both, kind of crueled by injury a little bit. But by definition, they didn't really have an impact at AFL level. Uh, they were average players, let's be honest. Michael Walters, I think, is a genuine gun. Probably never really reached the heights of being a genuinely top-end footballer in the competition. I think he was probably a little bit underappreciated outside of WA. But a very, very good player. One of my favorite Dockers players to watch, unless they're playing against us. But absolute bargain in the draft too. I think he was taken like 53 three or 52. I remember West Coast took Jordan Jones one pick before, so that still hurts. Now this might be controversial, I don't know, but Jack Watts is at least a decent player because, you know, he forked out a fairly long AFL career and um, at times he was actually pretty good. So I, I could move that up, but for the most part of his career, he wasn't a great contributor. He, he sort of had years where he was a good AFL player, but that probably spanned like less than a third of his AFL career, to be honest. So that's why I think Jack Watts, in the same way as Vickery, they, they forked out, you know, 100, I don't even know how many games, 100 plus games, I would have thought. Spent the majority of their career um, much maligned, which was probably unfair. Jack Watts was largely maligned because he was pick one. And I, I still reflect on that and think um, that was a bit harsh on a 17-year-old kid. This was back when you could get drafted at 17. So Jack Watts was genuinely, I think he was still in school. But nonetheless, I think he's a decent player, uh, no more than that. This headless Bulldogs player was Ace Cordy. I'm going to put him in average. Uh, he is almost the forgotten brother of Zane Cordy, another father-son pick for the Bulldogs. And maybe I just don't remember him that much, uh, but I am pretty confident he didn't play as many games as Vickery and Watts. Um, and I don't really remember anything other than that. Um, so by default, he's in the average pile, which is really for players that really never got a good look in an AFL level. Dan Hannanbury is a top liner, uh, obviously a premiership player for the Sydney Swans in 2012. Um, obviously, like he's had his career ruined by injury, and I think he could have really potentially won a Brownlow medal at one point, but you know, the latter stages of his career, particularly at St Kilda, never really got on the park consistently. So that being said, I'll, I'll, I think like his legacy will be as a top line midfielder. This is Mitch Brown of the originally, God, who did he get drafted to originally? He got drafted to Geelong and then was one of those Essendon supplemental players. Uh, and then I think he ended his career at Melbourne, but I would say he was decent because he, he at least, you know, played for three clubs uh, to, a reasonable level and I, I'd, I'd clearly put him above average but I don't think anyone would conclude that he was a good player um, when you consider who's already a good player. Ryan Schoenmakers, he is probably a good player. I think he played about 150 games um, and he won a one premiership at Hawthorne in 2015. I do rem remember some injury issues with him but he's not quite genuine gun but by default I think if you're a premiership player you go into good particularly when you play 150 games so I'm pretty comfortable with that for Schoenmakers. Zaharakis is another one. Uh, it's headless. I only know that Zaharakis because I only just made this like 15 minutes ago. Uh, but Zaharakis is a has been a good, consistent player for Essendon without ever being a genuine gun. I think that's fair to conclude, right? Nick Nat, I am going to put in top liner. Uh, again, sort of heavily scrutinized player um, and one player that a lot of non-West Coast fans are pretty skeptical about. But at the very base of it all, he's won three All-Australians and at his best has been the best ruckman in the game. You know, I'm not saying he's better than Max Gorn over the stretch of their careers and Nick Nat's done two ACLs and had missed cumulatively like three full seasons due to injury probably more than that but you know we're at his top level he is a top liner there's absolutely no doubt about it Daniel Rich I'll put in genuine gun obviously I think he's sort of in and out of the side at the moment the Brisbane Lions but since he has sort of been reformed into more of a medium defender um, I think at his best he's been gun worthy and I think he's had a long career and genuinely like he won the rising star he was consistently good for all of those how long has it been now 14 years my god Daniel Rich genuine gun happy with that Mitch Robinson 
Robinson, he is a good player, I think. Um, you know, he, he started his career at Carlton. Again, that seems like a lifetime ago now. And he was okay. He was kind of no, known more for his attitude rather than his actual quality. And he went to the Brisbane Lions and reinvented himself. And at a, at a time, he was a very, very good AFL standard wingman and potentially an All-Australian candidate. But again, doesn't go to genuine gun because he didn't do it for like the consistent part of his career. He didn't do that for long enough. So in terms of longevity, he falls down a place. But, you know, good player. Definitely better than decent. Jack Zebel, also a good player. I think that's fair. Um, drafted as a big inside midfielder and at times has played forward and back and I think he's done a very good reliable role for that but never really in the frame for an all-Australian jumper um, and therefore he just settles in good. Steel side bottom top liner um, you know again one of these players that was good from day one uh, as a sort of wingman forward for uh, Collingwood and at his best he came runner up in the Brownlow medal in 2018 and I think he was a bit of a late bloomer in the sense that I don't know if people thought he was elite he was probably just more dangerous before that but then he became a really consistent midfielder and I think he ends his career career as a top liner. I know he's still playing. Uh, I don't know why I phrased it like that. Liam Jones, I'm going to put in good player. Uh, at his best, he has been a genuine gun, but I think that spans a very minor part of his career. So sort of like Mitch Robinson, where his best has been very good, but there was a long time, particularly at Carlton, where he was... No, sorry, I'm misremembering that. It, it was his first into the Bulldogs. He was a bit of a meme. Drafted as a forward, reinvented as a defender, came good. Um, obviously took a year off the game. He's come back. He's pretty solid. I'd say good player purely because he doesn't have the longevity. If he played at that high standard throughout his whole career, he'd be in one of the top two categories. Jack Redden, I'm going to put in genuine gun. A very good player for the Brisbane Lions for the first seven years of his career. It must have been eight because I think he was a free agent. Uh, joined West Coast and uh, probably unheralded, underrated player, a player that we probably really miss now, and at the very least, a premiership player, and I think he was second in the BNF that year as well. So not certainly not a top liner, but a very consistently good player. Took a little while to gel at West Coast, but in terms of the entire context of his career, from start to finish, I'd say genuine gun. He's very no frills. He's more consistent, and that's why people might you know bristle at the fact that he's genuine gun, but very competitive, very consistent player. I'm a fan. Michael Hurley, I will put in genuine gun too, uh, only because, you know, you always got the sense with Hurley, both as a key defender and as a forward, that he had the potential to be, you know, all Australian consistently, but his body's kind of let him down for the large portions of his career. And that's kind of why I have him a little bit lower. I don't think he's achieved as much as Nick Nat, but he had the potential to. On talent, if you're ranking it on talent, I think he belongs in that top category. But in terms of how decorated he is, he falls down behind the pack. Neville Jetta, I'd say good player. Um, you know, at his best was a very, very good small defender. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh there. The problem is, it's kind of my memory failing me here. I've, I think of Neville Jetta as being a really good player when Melbourne was good and decent before that. I don't know. I mean, he was never all Australian. For me, he probably just sits in good player. But let me know, anyone who watches Neville Jetta a little bit more closely than I did. I'm going to say Luke Shuey is a top liner. Uh, yes, I'm biased because not only am I an Eagles fan, I'm like the biggest Luke Shuey fan ever. Uh, but he will go down as a great for West Coast and clearly better than Jack Redden, clearly better than Daniel Rich. Won a Norm Smith medal for one one of the statistically best grand final performances, let alone finals performances, uh, cha champion data I've ever recorded. So I'm going to cling to that and uh, I watch him closely, more closely than most. And I think he has rare attributes for being a strong clearance player and one of the most deadly players in space. Bodies let him down, but it doesn't really take away from his career. He's played 250 games, premiership player, best and fairest. You can't talk me out of that one. The two Dockers boys I'm having trouble with here, uh, Hayden Ballantyne and Stephen Hill. I think at their best, they're both genuine guns to be honest yeah i'm gonna put them both in genuine gun uh particularly around that period where ross lyon got Fremantle deep into the finals hayden ballantyne was annoyingly good and really damaging as a small forward he was a genuine match winner and uh you know small forwards it's it's chalk and cheese comparing them to other players because sometimes their output's down and it's not really their fault uh stephen hill as well i'm gonna put in genuine gun because uh, at his best, he was very, very, very damaging. As a uh, originally a wingman, his body started to let him down a little bit. I remember he, he sort of switched to the back line, and I'd say genuine gun, and probably could have achieved more had he not, again, been ruined by injuries. I'm going to put Chris Yaron in decent, to be honest. I was thinking about good player, but I, I just look at the other players in that band there. You've got Zaharakis, you've got Mitch Robinson, Zebel, Liam Jones, Hamish Hartlett, Tom Lynch, Chris Yaron was never on that level, let's be honest. So he falls into decent because he forked out a reasonable career uh, at Carlton, but ultimately, I mean, he got delisted halfway through his career. Stephen Motlop is probably... Ugh. 
I find it tough to play for Motlop. Uh, well, I'd say he's good. He's good. He's definitely not genuine gun, and he's better than decent. He's better than the players below, I think. Uh, obviously forged a career at two clubs, left as a free agent, um, been up and down a little bit, but at his base, like he, he's a good player. So let's review. Okay, so our top line is there are Dane Beams, Rory Sloan, Hannabury, Nat Nui, Side Bottom, Shuey. I'm happy with that. That's a pretty top tier elite level um, top tier. Genuine guns would be Phil Davis, Walters, Rich, Redden, Hurley, Ballantyne, and Hill. You know what? I'm going to make a change here. And I think that I'm going to put Hurley higher. I feel a bit bad about it because I made concessions, you know, for other players um, having injury ruin their career, but his best Hurley is probably a top liner. It's not his fault that he didn't win an All-Australian jumper. Um, part of that is injury. Part of that is he's just played so many different roles and be very good at it. So I'm going to change my mind. I think uh, Michael Hurley is clearly a better player than the players I've got in Genuine Gun. In good player, you've got Hartlett, Tom Lynch, Sean Makers, Zaha Rakers, um, Rich Robertson, Zeeble, Liam Jones, Neville Jetta, Stephen Motlop. I... Oh, does Hartlett go above? At his best, he was very good. Maybe we move Hartlett up. I think he belongs more on that Stephen Hill, Ballantyne level. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and then decent players, Vickery, Watts, uh, Mitch Brown, Shane, uh, Shane you know, got Chris Yaron, uh, for players that sort of, you know, forked out an AFL career, and that has to be respected, you know. Definitely decent. And the average players were the ones who just really never made an impact at AFL level in Johnston, um, Blees and Strauss, and then Ace Cordy. So that's my take on the 2008 draft, guys. Let me know. Who would you say is the best player from this draft? Mm, tough one, because it, the, the, all their peaks came at different times, it felt. I feel like Sloan and Hannanbury were good at the same time. Shuey and Sidebottom maybe a little bit later. Nat Nui got an All-Australian very uh, very early and then peaked a little bit later. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go Nick Nat, to be honest. But um, there is a bit of bias there. And I, uh, I think given how much West Coast midfield benefited from his service, um, he's probably the one. Not saying he had the best career, just that probably the one I'd pick. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. As always, make sure you go check out that uh, manscaped.com offer and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.